would, uh, in the next couple of seconds, send me something on the question answer that says they can hear us, that would be helpful. OK. Uh, let's get a confirmation that we've got voice coming through to everybody. We do. We're good. Wonderful. Go. Wonderful. Well, we'll get this show on the road. And again, Lori, Lori is a, a, a genius with the the, audio, the, the clips. I love the, uh, the morpho man here with his little uh, aceware heart beating away there. So uh, I, 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 I just really love that. So Lori, uh, kudos. <laughs> Kudos to you for another another great set of slides. The bountiful harvest, that harvest, and again, I guess as a, the agrarian nature, you'll you'll note that we're going to have quite a few uh, uh, references to harvesting going on here. So that um, we'll be covering that as we go. It's kind of around the holidays. Uh, Thanksgiving is done. We're ready for Christmas. Um, and we're here to talk about marketing, and, and as kind of was mentioned in the uh, start, um, I've been traveling all over the country this fall at uh, seminars, conferences, running into a lot of experts, including Ralph Elliott, whom I don't know if he's on, but I know it signed up, uh, but with you, some of the things that um, we've found and discovered and really kind of do a best practices on the marketing. Uh, first of all, I guess I'd like to kind of go back to the, uh, well, as far as outline, again, this is really going to be kind of a compendium of tips. So there really isn't an outline. It'll be ideas for marketing. And starting with the fundamentals and the kind of like what is the meaning of life or what is, what is marketing. Um, and, of course, the computers are down. And, of course, as we were trying to get our audio up, that is good. What are the four P's of marketing? This is in a classic marketing textbook, but it is the product, it is a place, it is the promotion, <clears throat> and it is the price. And one of the things that I wanted to really kind of uh, make sure that we identify for people, uh, that there really isn't any magic of uh, trying to come up with a tremendous uh, marketing promotion for a product that stinks. And I, I guess the issue of the, the sad state of the American uh, automobile industry kind of relates to that. They might have the best promotions that Ford and GM and Chrysler uh, have for marketing their product, but if the product is not something people want or need, the best, most creative ad agencies aren't going to salvage it. So this whole idea of understanding the product, and we're going to talk about that a bit more, really has got to be a critical part of successful marketing. I think a lot of people think, oh, marketing is advertising. It's how to come up with the cute ad or the cute web page. Well, they can bring people to what you've got, but if the product doesn't satisfy them, fill a need, it's not quality, they're not going to be back. And your business is going to suffer by that. So again, I, I don't know how much more I can emphasize that, again, um, good marketing can't salvage a crappy product. Um, now, somebody might argue, well, Windows is an example where marketing has trumped the, the, the Apple. But again, that's kind of coming back now. So how to be a great marketer? Well. Uh, my slides got a little off kilter here, but the answer is you got to work at it. And again, from the standpoint of uh, you talk about geniuses, how to be a marketing genius, well, Einstein's, uh, whether it was Einstein or whether it was Edison, but the idea that to be a genius in anything, it involves 1% pers inspiration and then 99% perspiration. So again, uh, the idea of if you're going to be successful at most anything, you got to work at it. And that's the same thing with this whole business of marketing. OK, well, so what are the kind of tips that we want to do? And again, I, I kind of feel bad because I, you know we really don't have new and exciting ideas here. It's really trying to remember for everybody or get people to re-remember or rediscover what are the fundamentals that make this work? And uh, I guess to me, one of those fundamentals is focusing on your customer. And again, kind of going back to the idea of the product, and that is 
how do you know what people want unless you know the people that you've got in your in your client in your in your, in your community in your area in your service area and um, one of the one of the uh, the truism that I picked up way early in my career from Thurman White, who was the dean of uh, continuing ed at the University of Oklahoma, uh, was to plow your own ground first. And I think that, again, goes back to uh, this slide we talked about here. Focus on your customers. Focusing on your existing people. Uh, do what you do best. You know, if you've got a particular if you got a particular skill set in your university, uh, in your if you've got a particular niche market that you're working with, work that market and make sure that you've you've, you've taken care of it before you get out and begin to explore. Um, again, <clears throat> another uh, I guess mentor of mine, uh, Stan Matsky, who was at the University of Nebraska for years. Uh, talked to me a lot about the parable of John Jones, and his idea was to understand what other people have. And I've kind of paraphrased that and said that if you're going to sell John Jones what John Jones buys, you must see the world through John Jones' eyes. And so how do you understand your John Joneses that are in your database? Well, one is the statistical reporting. And uh, again, um, if you have not, and I'm going to try to roll to a desktop here. I'm going to have to bring up the, the webinar data. Hang on a second here. Didn't get this loaded before we got started. But in the reports, in Student Manager, if you go to Reports, Statistics, Names, this is probably one of the best areas that you can begin to understand the John Joneses that are in your day. This is uh, your own ground. These are your existing customers. These are your existing contacts who presumably have said, hey, send me information. I heard that the University of whomever does some great stuff. Well, they're already in your database, so use them. What you could do with the demographic statistics is do some kind of analysis. OK, where are these people from? You can do it by firm. You can do it by city, by state, zip, county. Again, depending on the kind of things you're marketing, selling your particular distribution of customers, you pick one of these. Uh, typically, summary report is what you're looking for. You can do the analysis in multiple ways because this is we're going to actually Lori and I will do a webinar on statistical analysis in uh, the next year. But just for briefly, uh, in the previous screen we picked a category of what we wanted to analyze: cities. Now we're going to decide what names do we want to look at. Well, what you might typically do is you say go run all names in the database and see what the city breakdown is. Then take a subgroup of them, say everybody who registered in a given year, and we'll go back to 08 and look at the amount due. And you then compare what is the total demographic breakdown of your entire database. Look at the demographic breakdown by city in this case for one particular course year. Now, you can continue to drill this down, and this is what we'll cover in that January webinar, by subject matter. Well, if you wanted to take 08 people in the subject category, say business and in versus personal interest and enrichment, how are the names breaking down? Do you see any patterns in your participation? This, again, is the perspiration part of marketing. Doing your homework, trying to figure out where people are, what do they want in the areas, and of course, that's going to let you drive marketing dollars and efforts to go back and get more people like them. Uh, so again, based on the data, you can see where there, how many from each area, and this is the unique thing. You can see how many registrations and even go over to the average course fee by area. Now, I'm going to pause a second, Lori, and see if there's any buzz going on in the discussion loop.
a lot of discussion about your uh, <laughs> analogy with <laughs> automakers. They like that one. That one. They like know. that one. Yeah. Well, it, it's really kind of a tough deal, and I again I feel for them. But um, okay. Well, let's jump back to our slideshow. Um, so the idea of, of running those statistical reports. Well, let's kind of move on to some other concepts on here. Number one, and this is a mechanical issue for you as a unit, uh, putting all your eggs in one basket. And what I really mean by that is keeping all of your mailing slash contact list in one place, student manager. Now, I'm going to ask for a show of hands, and uh, Lori will promise to be not, not rat anybody out. But I want to have anybody out there who is using a separate mailing list, whether it's ACT, whether it's contact management, whether it's Excel or Access, if you are keeping mailing lists that you have for CE outside a student manager, raise your hand. So again, we're looking for just click on your hand. Lori, remind us how that works. Let's click the little hand once. If you click it twice, your vote counts and then goes away, so I don't get a good count. All righty. Uh, again, we're asking you to raise your hand if you keep your mailing list, if you have any mailing list outside of Student Manager that, that you maintain yourself. Not that if you've used one. If you rented a list, no, I'm talking about a management list that you maintain in Excel or Access or Act outside of Student Manager. Okay, Lori, what's the bad news? Uh, about 55%. Oh, my God! Okay, <laughs> I, you're really getting me irritated. Uh, and, and again, I, I, I guess I'm, 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 I'm amazed. Student manager, uh, you know, and, uh, okay, uh, you, you sense my frustration here. I cannot think of any reasons why you should manage a list outside of student manager except for about three. One is a privacy issue if you've got an eyes-only list, but that... The point of putting mailing lists in student manager is that so when you put in a name in a mailing list and then they register for a class, you're able to determine what mailing list that person came from and be able to analyze how well that list is performing. For a name record, you can add an unlimited number of list codes to that name record. Uh, that also if you have the name outside of student manager and then you put it in student manager, if that person changes an address, where do you go for the correct address? You've got two addresses for this person. I am just apoplectic. Um, okay. Um, and again, if someone wants to argue with me on that, I'll, I'll take them up on it. And there are a few instances where I can justify, I can rationalize having an outside list. But again, student manager has, it has a tickler file. You've got the call back here where you can say, I want to be reminded to call this person back in X number of days, and that will pop up when you start student manager. Uh, you can put interest codes. You've got demographic codes on this person. And here's the deal. It ties to the registration. And a mailing list, unless you're doing double entry, which, gosh, I hope you're not. Um, it, it just again, uh, I really, really, really would would suggest you bring him into manager. Uh, finally, and I'll get off this, Lori. Sorry. Um, there are conversion programs. You have a converter tool with Student Manager that you can use to import data from another database and bring them into Student Manager. And if you go to the help system. Um, one of the special procedures would be importing data. And there is, again, more rationale why you should use Student Manager as your home for all mailing list. And it talks about ConvertW, how you can use the ConvertW tool to import names. I've got to take my nitroglycerin pill here. So, all righty. Um, let's get back to the show, and we'll try not to uh, lose my cool. Um, anybody arguing with me in text on this one? No, but we might want to do a quick poll here and find out if people want a webinar on importing mailing lists. 
All righty, let's do a hand show on that. How many people would be interested in a session on how to use the convert tool to import mailing lists? Yeah, we're get, we're getting a pretty good response on that. Okay. Um, All right. We'll, well, let's we'll put add that, that to the 2009 list. Put put that on the list. Very good. All right. Well, again, um, and again, your technician can help you with that. Like I said, you saw the help guide. It's also available to you. Coding. Uh, again, um, coding is so important. Now, if you look at those cows, uh, they look alike, don't they? Now, uh, the shape of the cow is alike, et cetera, et cetera. But again, if you were looking at a database of the word cow, you wouldn't be able to know they're different unless you had a code to indicate that this little guy is brown and this one is spotted black and white. Again, that's part of that whole business of coding your people. And again, um, if you're coding people that are students in Student Manager and you're trying to do of coding in a third-party mailing list, then the problem is that you don't have a way to track on that third-party mailing list what types of courses this person takes relative to the types of coding you've got the age of the party, the gender of the person, if you've got ethnicity or education level. Um, again, by tying that name into your database of registrations, you're able to do the statistical analysis. So again, um, coding is just so critical. Uh, there is actually, if you remember, a webinar that we did on coding. That's in the webinar archive. So again, that's available for you for reference. Testimonials, and now we're kind of moving off to uh, uh, other from the standpoint of actually advertising now. Um, testimonies really are powerful kind of things. And again, this is the kind of stuff we're talking about. Awesome, according to Ralph Elliott. I don't know if Ralph's sitting in, but um, I know Ralph is a proponent of, of testimonials. Scintillating and persuasive, says Lori. Quite effective, says Sir Chuck. Well, again, um, people uh, like to know what other people think. Uh, if you've been on any of the online purchasing components, you'll note that you're invited to read the testimonial from people who have bought that product. And again, I think um, the, the, the you telling something is one thing. Having a customer, someone who is like the person you're trying to sell to, say it, is really more powerful, more, more better. So I would definitely um, suggest you, you, you try to incorporate those as much as you can. Lori, any other comments on that? No, don't think so. Good enough. All righty. Um, Speaking of uh, promotion and websites now, freebies on your website. And I'm, I'm not sure whether this dog got some free glasses with their dog chow here. But the idea is that uh, for a website, if you want to drive, the point is, I think, is that if you want to drive business to uh, your uh, drive business to your website, Try to get uh, something on there for free. Maybe it's, um, uh, I don't know, a coupon. You might, um, Lori, what, what other ideas might be the kind of things on here? Well, one of the things I learned when I went to the Sloan C conference was that a lot of campuses now have lecture capture software available where you can incorporate the PowerPoint slides that the professor or the speaker is using and record their voice and movements in the classroom so that you can record a particularly good session and make that available for download on your website, sort of like we're doing with these webinars. It doesn't cost right. something. Right, and that, that actually, and, and I guess kind of related to that, and I'm going to jump back to our website here, and again, I'm not sure. We've got uh, uh, as information that they can get, and of course you can get a free download and you can get some handouts. But from the standpoint of for most of our customers, that is you guys running classes at the universities, colleges, places, is to have, if you wanted to try to do a web capture of maybe a snippet of one of your popular programs, uh, and, and this is kind of what Lori said, and put that up, you can record uh, three or four minutes of a, a hot session 
and put that in as something for people to see. Um, so again, part of the uh, part of the idea of there's something on your website for people to come visit, and I think that a whole idea of bringing traffic to the website in any way possible. Now, kind of speaking to this, and Lori, I'm going to let you, you, you've kind of thought about the social marketing kind of thing for a while. Why don't you uh, give some ideas here about uh, our feeling about it and just a, a quick definition of it here. We did a poll when you did your registration and asked if you were doing any kind of social marketing on Facebook or MySpace or Ning or any of the other social websites, and about half of you came back and said you weren't even sure what it was. So social marketing, not new, been around for a long time, but mostly employed in the healthcare field, as a matter of fact, trying to get people to do more positive things and listening to them about why they wouldn't. And marketers eventually picked and it's listening to your customer and designing for them rather than designing something and trying to make them want it. Uh, when I went to business school, that was the thing. It, you're marketing, you're trying to make them want your product. Well, now the idea is to listen to what people have to say and design a product based on what they need rather than on what you think they want. So, so it's and... more about talking and listening. Yeah, now, now I think the other thing that kind of comes in here is everybody's heard about and read about and, and looked online about Web 2.0 and that whole idea of the interactive. And, and that's where Facebook and, and uh, all of these things where people, the, the individual people, are involved in this process. Uh, blogs, you know, are, are tied into that. People feedback. Someone writes a blog, and I say, "Well, you're full of horse hockey," and I think this is what ought to be done. And you're participating in the process. And and again, that, that's fundamental to marketing is is this whole idea of understanding, you know, kind of where you are. And and one of the classic, um, oh, it was the agonizing points of discussion in continuing ed for. For 35 years since I started in this has kind of been this idea of, well, is the purpose of a continuing ed department to give people what they want, which would be uh, what NASCAR and, and, and world wrestling, and, and I don't mean to denigrate people who like that, or is it to kind of drive people to do things like civics uh, education and, and doing uh, recycling, and it's kind of like uh, almost kind of preaching, or should you kind of be a leader in trying to promote, um, as Lori said, good health, or promote um, wise use of our resources? And I think the answer has got to be both of those. You know, you've got to be able to make enough money to be in business, uh, but you've got to also, I think, your your benefit would come, and this is a philosophical view of you know, trying to hear what they're saying, but trying to tie that. Well, people are interested in 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 uh, the, their kids. Okay, well, if you're interested in your kids, then being concerned about recycling, being concerned about becoming more efficient in their use of natural resources is going to be good, or other your children will be growing up in a wasteland. And, and, and again, I, I, I think that's the kind of thing that <clears throat> all kind of ties into that, so... Uh, any discussion? We get any buzz going on that? People like NASCAR. Be, well, and, and again, it's um, number one spectator sport. Uh, but the idea is that you know, is that the purpose of CE? Is to you know, uh, uh, that's that's a different kind. Of, that's entertainment as opposed to education, I suppose. Um, course descriptions. Again. Um, one of the things about, and this is marketing now, number one, you've got to, or, or advertising, number one, you've got to have a product that people want. But certainly the other thing is how you promote and how you describe that. That's a pretty common kind of description of an Excel course. Now, if you wanted to maybe jazz it up, uh, and, you know, what is it that you can do? Wow, if you want to highlight the material, you want to charge touch F11, Oh, boy, didn't know that. Well, how do I learn about that? Well, join us for this Excel class. <clears throat> so, again, the idea of maybe it's the same exact course, but the idea of changing the description uh, is something that you might want to do. And, again, from the standpoint of your, of your course descriptions, 
when you've got a class in the system and you've been using it for a while, um, just go into your catalog information, revise that course description. Uh, give it a little bit more snap. Uh, again, focus on the, the benefits for the consumer. And, and there's, of course, you know, whole kinds of, of, of references on um, a writing, writing copy for, for people. OK. Um, how often are you in? Go ahead, Lori. Uh, one of the things I learned, I, I went up to the Campbell School several years ago, and they are a folk school with folk art type classes, residence where you stay for a week. One of the things that they told me they found in their statistical analysis of their course descriptions was, if you didn't say in there, you're going to go home with a canoe, you're going to go home with a quilt top, you're going to go home with eight baskets, people mm. didn't, they wanted okay. the, this is what we're going to accomplish type thing. And I, and I think your, your point there, this word of the take-home, I know Ralph Elliott uh, is big on this idea of a take-home. And again, whether it is handouts, and, and again, paper is probably not an exciting take-home, but your, your comment about you know, uh, taking home, in the case of Excel, uh, you know, you'll take home, uh, you know, bring a spreadsheet in, and you'll take home a chart. Uh, and I think, don't you think that's, that would be, again, an idea of a take-home thing that uh, in the course description people say, oh, cool, I'm going to get something out of this course, you know. Yeah, you can't uh, they, be abstract about it. You have to be in your face, and this is what you're going to get. Boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, good, good point. Um, how often are you in touch with customers? And again, um, communicating with your people, and, and, um, and this goes back to, a your own ground first, you know, focusing on your existing customers. Um, again, the number of statistics that indicate that <clears throat> you know, your best customers are the people that you've already had business with. And the idea is how do you communicate with them? Well, uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, of course, with student manager. Uh, when you, and this is again going back to the idea of communicating with people based on their interests. <clears throat> well, number one, uh, general announcements to these people via email, uh, sending out uh, reminders, uh, being able to maybe send announcements on the comment about community calendar on cable uh, TV, newspaper announcements, uh, putting up posters in the library, kind of being visible, getting back to your people. <clears throat> going back to my near heart attack about the number of people running separate mailing lists out of manager, one of the things, of course, you know is that when you're in a course and you create a subject code, <clears throat> and this is, again, a marketing thing everybody ought to be doing, everybody should be putting a subject code on a class when they create the class because... When they do that, that code will automatically be stamped on a student's interest code. So if I registered in an ACEWARE course or Lisa registered in any ACEWARE class, she will have an interest code automatically stamped onto her list. Now, how does this relate back to keeping in touch? Well, one of the dilemmas about keeping in touch with people <clears throat> is that you try to keep in touch with people with things they are interested in. And this is especially critical if you're running a, a business and industry and personal interest and among personal interests, a range from the um, how to clean your, uh, your goose that you shot to how to make a macrame wall hanging. <clears throat> uh, there's probably not a lot of overlap between the goose shooters and the macrame makers. So that when you are doing your announcements, you're going to want to go into your database that's in Student Manager along with your mailing list, focus on the interest codes of the people, and send the special announcements. Hey, you know, um, John James Jones, the greatest duck skinner alive, is coming to town, and there's going to be a seminar on how to clean your game. Well, you're going to send that to those people who have taken the outdoors and the hunting and the outdoor adventure type programs probably won't focus on mailing to uh, the um, home interior decorating, uh, macrame, artsy, craftsy kind of people necessarily. Um, 
The other kind of things, uh, Laura, you had a couple things that you've used, I think, in the past that seem to be effective for communicating with customers. Oh, free marketing. We used everything we could. The cable channel, do some PowerPoint slides for them. We sent letters to people who might help us market. We sent letters on dog obedience to the veterinarians. Mm. We sent letters on cooking classes to the wine stores and the gourmet stores in the area, and that seemed to be very effective. So we partnered with people to help get the word out, and, and that worked pretty well, too. And, and I think that's a good point. We didn't talk a lot about, I don't think in here, about partnering, but this whole business of cross-marketing or partnering and the idea that if you've got courses on gardening or courses on um, growing things, that you put a little flower out that goes to the garden stores and your uh, nurseries. <clears throat> and maybe some of those nurseries might even be doing instruction. And, of course, that's where Lori said, they might be interested in sending a, a mailing to their customer list about the seminar they're doing with the university or the college on uh, growing garden plants or growing uh, you know, patio gardens, whatever you might be doing. Um, I had a thought here, and it went away. Oh, uh, hand raising. How many people, you want to ask Lori, how many people are using like public service announcements on either cable or radio uh, or the community calendar on the radio, uh, just that uh, they're really focused on trying to do that. Give us a show of hands. You know, that's kind of just... that you ask because in one town where we were, no matter how big the ad I took out, people always saw it on the community. They never yeah, have interesting. a full page yeah. ad to get ignored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> looks about half, about, about half. Okay. Now. Well, okay, keep your fingers handy. I, I just uh, got done posting the pickup I want to sell. By the way, it's a V6 uh, Dakota. If anyone's to buy it, I'll do it. You know. <laughs> How many people have done advertising on Craigslist? Again, raise your hand if you ever put an ad for a class on, Cra on your local Craigslist. And I guess... Wow, we're waiting. Uh, if you've done this, tell me, did it work? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, shoot a shoot a note to Lori, and I let me let me try to. For those of you that don't know Craigslist, um, it is a free um, uh, it's a free um, posting service where you can uh, look for pretty activities. Uh, I believe there is classes. Kansas City, Missouri. We're looking at classes. And here are the different classes that folks in Kansas City have been advertising. And again, here's if you want to look up my car, there's where you can go to look up for my pickup truck that I'm selling. Uh, no charge, and it's a do-it-yourself um, website. What, what was the Craigslist response? Only about 10% about of our people. Really? Okay. Uh, and again, again, the idea of, of trying it out. Uh, are you driving customers to your website? And, and again, um, that whole business, most everybody has a web page. Hopefully, most of you have Ace Web. Um, again, a lot of different ways you can do that, basically making sure that your URL that gets to the continuing ed part of what you're doing is prominently posted on any advertising that you're doing on those banner ads. Put it in Craigslist, you know. Tie it into what it is people are you're trying to bring people to. Um, uh, get it Google and search engine optimization. And again, we talk about statistics in student manager, but uh, there are a variety of tools uh, within the Google Analytics. Uh, we had the webinar with Daryl Clark recently, which was in our webinar archives. It is an open access one that talks about SEO, search engine optimization. That's what SEO stands for. Uh, again, something that helps you analyze where people are coming from. And, and also, one of the dilemmas for web pages is you don't know if you've done a major promotion try to drive people to your website. Well, if you were watching your Google Analytics numbers, you could see timing-wise. Well, if you sent out a promotion on the 12th of November, and you saw the spike, you're saying, yeah, we did get some hit on that, because that's the only thing you advertise then, and wow, look at the activity bump <clears throat> you know, in, in the system. 
Um, emailing again, uh, I would I would do a caveat: don't stop as long as you're emailing things to people that they're interested in, and you're not mailing how to skin a duck to the lady who does uh, ceramic macro, ceramic pottery, you know, uh, or the guy that does ceramic pottery. Uh, subject line is so critical in uh, email. Um, <clears throat> sending follow-ups, the use of emails for follow-ups, thanks for attending, uh, this whole idea of asking for referrals. I don't know that we mentioned that in here, but um, the idea of uh, asking people to, 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 to give you the name of a friend, that whole viral marketing thing, which, of course, again, in Ace Web, uh, you can do the send information to a friend option on your Ace Web. <clears throat> um, uh, trying to build your mailing list. And, and again, but I think we're meaning email mailing list. Make sure you ask for people's email every chance you get. Uh, and, and again, this goes back to this idea of maintaining your own in-house list, which ought to be done in student manager. Okay, I'll quit screaming. Marketing expense, and again, I, I have a little bit of an issue here, but I, you know, the numbers say that marketing is more traditional marketing, and I think by that means radio, TV, print ads <clears throat> is more expensive than online marketing by as much as 70%. But I guess my caveat would be, how do you know? Because it's not the expense of marketing, and this is, this is any marketer is going to tell you, it's not how much you spend on marketing, it's how much money you get back from the marketing money you spend, okay? It's return on investment. And of course, any of us with money in the stock market and with our retirements know <clears throat> getting the money back right now has been a bit of a problem. Uh, so we'll, we'll not belabor that. And the answer is how do you know that? By tracking your marketing. And again, that's where student manager is used for. You have a source code on the name, and you have a tracking code on the registration. So on the name record, you have a source code. How did this name get into your student manager? Was it a result of a cable TV? Was it a referral? Was it the newspaper display ad? <clears throat> that is your marketing for the person. Then on the registration record, you have, how did this registration get into student? What was the promotion that brought them in? Lori, is that you banging, or are you okay? Yeah. My okay. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, that is the tracking marketing. And we go back to the idea of, well, how do you know the information? Well, you know it because you're going to run the marketing reports. I, I really probably am getting a little over ballistic here, but we'll get back to that. So we've got tracking codes. We've got source codes. What do you do with them? Well, statistics. If we want to do a source code analysis, we say, I want to look at the source code. How did my names get into the system? Now, this not the point. This is not registrations. Just as where did my names in Aceware come from? So we're going to say source code, run the list for all names. We just want to look at everything. Uh, we'll skip the money because we want to have our inquiries. So in my bogus little database, here's where people came from. How many names and how many registrations? Um, now, that is the overall set of names. Well. What you really want to know, though, is where did the money come from? And that is done in tracking codes. So we're going to go tracking codes. Now, this is at the registration record level. There are two kind of tracking code reports, course number by tracking code, which is the uh, individual course, <clears throat> or the global. Uh, we used to say the mother of all tracking code reports. So we'll run the whole darn thing. And we're going to look at 07, because I've got a few more people there. Now, this is where the money hits the road. The rubber hits the road. It's the Jerry Maguire moment. Show me the money. So this tells us four registrations. What promotions brought them in? How many? What is the percentage of my total registrations? How much income I brought in from those? You would put in on the source code. 
how much it cost you, and here's what you're looking for. Mark this down. You want to know what is the return on investment, and that's going to tell you that. And it'll also tell you, if you are mailing brochures, what is your percent return. That is the tracking code reports. Now, I'm going to pause here, and we're going to go look at what a code is. If you haven't, gosh, I hope you've been here. Source code tracking code, that you go to the code set, source code tracking code. You put in whatever the code is. And you put in the cost of that promotion. Uh, and if it was the number of brochures, you can put in how many brochures you sent. Here's a mailing uh, that cost $250. It was 5,000 brochures. And uh, it can be an active code or not. So that you, you it's like fresh uh, uh, biscuits, you know. They, they get stale pretty fast. And so once a, once a promotion is done, take it off the list by deactivating it. But anyway, that's where your tracking comes from. We'll go back and run that other tracking report, which is by individual course now. And we're going to look at a course by course breakdown. What this will tell you as a marketer, and this is in your evaluation, is that within any given course, what was the type of marketing efforts that generated people for this particular class. So it tells you the, 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 the uh, I guess, the, the, the tree level, whereas that other report was looking at the forest. This is looking at individual trees. For each individual program area, what mix of marketing was generating the enrollments? And again, related to your, your analysis, um, based on what kind of query you might run. So if we wanted course number and we wanted to say, and we want to look at only people in a particular subject matter, i.e. business and industry, we can see the differences between business and industry and what um, you guys are doing with the general routine. OK, we're running a little bit late. Let me get back on track here. Uh, other suggestions, again, ask your staff. I mean, you know, if you're the director, you're the coordinator, uh, your staff whom you work with, uh, they talk to people every day as they register. Find out what they're doing. Get them involved. If you're going to do marketing tracking, you've got to involve your staff and make them understand how important that is to ask the question after a long day's work. Uh, well, Mr. Havlicek, how did you find out about our programs here at the university? <clears throat> and again, if you're going to do that, treat them to lunch. They appreciate that. A couple of last thoughts. Um, again, uh, knowing your top dogs. Mark them in the database. If you've got good students, uh, make sure you know who they are and they take care of them. Um, yeah, Pay-per-click marketing or social networking. If you've got a marketing department in your college or in a local university, See if a class might be interested in working with you on that. Uh, and again, always be on the lookout for you can, how you can spread the word about, um, about your, your programs. Where can you go from here? Well, I, I've, I've mentioned these people again, but there's a couple of great resources that are e-newsletters that you can subscribe to. They're free. <clears throat> uh, you, some of these have premium service where you have to pay for, but they offer a lot of free stuff. Marketing Sherpa and Marketing Profs. Uh, certainly another one is uh, Ralph, uh, who's a, been a user of Aceware for years, uh, does a successful marketing of conferences and seminars program. Uh, that's a, that's a, a program coming up this next year. And then finally, again, don't forget the Aceware webinar archives uh, that we've got uh, on, our, on our Aceware web page uh, down at the bottom here, webinar archive, where you can go in and look all of the programs we've been doing. Uh, there's a couple of three. There's a coding one. Uh, there's a mailing list one. There's marketing with student manager. And then we've got search engine optimization with Daryl. So again, uh, resources galore. Uh, all you guys got to do is do the work. So 
Uh, again, we're going to go to questions for a few minutes. I uh, did want to leave you with our final webinar of the year next Tuesday on end of year cleanup and maintenance. And we'll have maybe a guest speaker or two in on that, um, give you a new set of faces to talk to. So, Lori, how's the questions look? Anything we need to address or wrap up here? Janet says that they put an option for gift certificates on Craigslist and that that got oh. responses, that that worked out fairly interesting. So uh, another good idea. Uh, Very and good. And by that meaning that to, to buy gift certificates to or the place of X, Y, or Z. Correct. Yeah, OK. Uh, and people would like to see the Jerry Maguire money report again. <laughs> Okay, uh, show me the money on the marketing. And again, uh, this is predicated on, of course, that you have, uh, let me get in here, that you've got it. whoops, there's one no tracking code. You've got to put a tracking code in the registration right there. You've got to have the tracking code, okay? <clears throat> so you go to reports, statistics, it's tracking not, code. It's not building as quickly on our side. Okay. Did you see where the tracking code was? Okay. So here we are. Reports, statistics, tracking codes. And again, I, you got to remind me, Lori. I do tend to get a little spastic on that. And again, the two different reports uh, across all courses for the global for a program quarter or year or term, and then by individual course. Uh, so this is the area, and again, uh, show me the money, amount due, amount paid, uh, your query to determine what uh, data you want to analyze, <clears throat> and it will then generate for you uh, an analysis of what promotions generated what registrations and how much money it brought in and it's your return on investment. So again, I think we talk about this in the marketing tips, but uh, that, that whole idea of marketing tracking, that's, that's what this is all about. It's getting the code into your student manager tracking code. OK, other questions? I think we're good. Well, we managed to catch up on time. And I apologize for maybe getting a little hyperventilated a couple of times. But <clears throat> I really would, uh, I, again, I just, for those of you that are doing separate lists, now like I said, there are a couple of cases where um, uh, I could indicate a privacy list or if someone else is maintaining a list, but if, if you in continuing ed or community ed or workforce are maintaining separate lists of people that you're trying to sell classes to, um, and, and these are people who might be taking classes. I cannot think of a reason why you wouldn't want them in this name record right here so that you can track when they were updated, their last activity, the interest they've taken. You can make have one place to update their address. There is a cornucopia of reasons, a plethora, an abundance of reasons why you'd want to do that. Um, Lori, any other thoughts here then? Or we can thank you again for a great slide uh, set up and um, ask people to join us again um, next Tuesday. That's coming right up here. And if you're not going to join us for end of year cleanup, have a wonderful holiday. We'll see you in January. Very good. And we'll be, uh, Lori and I, toward that end, Lori and I will be announcing and uh, whether we'll have it. Uh, the whole spring quarter, but we'll try to get a couple of them announced for January, so we'll be able to unveil at least a few of those uh, at the end of our uh, webinar next week. Right? We will. All righty. All right, everybody, take care. Thanks for hanging with us, and uh, go back out there and work away at being a good marketer, because uh, if you work at it, uh, good. All righty. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.